Sorry. Uh-oh, here comes your daddy with your warm milk, stand man. I said. Look at me when I talk to you. Listen for a change. I know it's late. Look, son, there's nothing to do around here this time of night. Nothing good, that is. That's right, Dad. If a guy's out after 10 o'clock, you think he's robbing a bank. What's the matter? Why don't you trust me? Your mother and I worry about you. You and that Eric Burgess running around in that souped-up car. Look, Dad, you don't need to bring Eric Burgess into this. All right, so you don't want me to have a car. Just don't get on my back for going around with somebody that does have one. At least his parents trust him. It isn't that we don't trust you, and we don't object to your going, if you come in at a decent hour. Don't you realize that we worry about you? Worry? Look, Dad, what's there to worry about? I just don't get all this worry bit. You're old enough and smart enough to know the answer to that. Accidents. Kids getting off on the wrong foot with girls and grades. Oh, I know you don't think about it now. But it would be much easier for us if we let you kids, you and your sister, do what you want to do. Oh, I'm not very popular with her either these days. Look, Dad, either you trust a guy or you don't. It's a different world. Kids are different now. But things aren't so different. Parents have always been concerned about their children. And the kids have resented it. You'll never know how parents feel until you walk in their shoes and are responsible for another human being, one that you love. Holy Toledo, I'm keeping you up past your bedtime. Where's he been? Who knows? Tuned me out again. Put me on the defensive as usual. Said we didn't trust him. Did you know that you're married to an old goat? And you, you've given birth to a new breed. They're called the we're different than you were breed. Oh, that again. How do you talk to them? Do we try too hard? Maybe. What about this car business, Helen? I'd just as soon let him have a car than see him running around risking his neck with this show-off Eric. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, we'll talk about it tomorrow. The day after that and the day after that. <laughs> Where's Sherry? What in thunder takes her so long? She'll be late for school again. Cheryl! Coming! Hurry, dear, you're going to be late. You go ahead, I'm on a diet. Cheryl, you get down here this minute. As long as you're a member of this family, you'll join us at the table at least once in the day. Cheryl, it is a time we should be together, dear. <clears throat> Lord, we are grateful for this food. As I was saying, we are grateful for this food and for this day. Amen. Why do we have to have such fattening breakfast? When I get married... When you get married? Huh. Sam. I notice some of your friends don't run when they see me. Oh? Who, for instance? Oh, um, maybe...
maybe the same one you got cussed for being out so late with last night. You'd better stay in your own league. What was Daddy so shattered about? Same old static, the worried bit. They make a career of worrying on and on. Yak, 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 yak. But son, someday you'll be glad. I'm doing this for your own good. It's your grandmother Coleman. She's had a heart attack. It's pretty bad. Oh, no. Not grandma. When did it happen? Where is she? She's in the hospital. Your grandfather is terribly upset. Oh, poor daddy. We told him we'd take the very first plane, but what about your children? The house and school and meals? Look, you two, get packed. After all, we're not exactly babies. We can hold things down on this end. Helen, maybe I'd better put you on the plane until I can get Aunt Louise out here to take care of things. Oh, Sam, I just can't go alone. Moms, Stan and I will be all right here. Come on, I'll help you pack. Stan, there's nothing to worry about, really. It's just that, well, son, we're leaving you in charge here now. You've often said that I didn't trust you. Well, now I'm trusting you with the two most precious things I have, you and your sister. Do what you think I would do if anything should come up. And, son, Cheryl's just beginning to find out she's a woman. So be gentle with her. Safe and sound. Thanks for the ride, Eric. It was fun. I love your car. Cheryl, I'd better be going. Hey, why don't you eat with us? Stan's making pizza. Stan? Cooking? Forget it. Well, be seeing you. How about tonight? That's no party. Well, I don't know. Come on. You're a big girl now. OK. Why not? Sounds fun. That's my baby. See you about 8 tonight. Seven o'clock. I've been with a friend of yours. Yeah, I know. I saw you, but where? I told you to stay in your own league. Eric's too old for a kid like you, and he drives too fast, and... That's a nice way to talk about your friend. Look, cut it, will you? Dad left me in charge, and don't you forget it. How can I? You're beginning to sound just like him. Clean up this mess, and I'll go get some hamburgers. <laughs> Thought you were having pizza, Stan. It didn't turn out. Are you going to that snow party tonight? No, I guess not. 
Oh, come on. Just because Kathy's out of town? No use hibernating. Look around, boy. Take a pick. I don't think so. Kathy'd have a fit. Speaking of babes, that kid's sister of yours is not bad. Funny thing. She's been around all these years. And all of a sudden, there she is. Yeah, Cheryl's okay, I guess, but right now she's just a kid. Oh, big brother noises. Man, I've got to go. Hey, take off the mask. I know you. Funny, funny man. You're not actually going anyplace with that goop on, are you? What's wrong with it? You seem to like it on Kathy. Well, Kathy's older. Where do you think you're going? I'm waiting for someone. Who? Eric. Eric? You gotta be kidding. You're not going to the snow party with him. Eric, why that? Why didn't he tell me? Well, you can't go. Why is it so awful when I want to go? You get so mad when Mom and Dad won't let you go. You're not allowed to date boys that old. And what's the idea of trying to look 19? You know a guy treats a 19-year-old a lot different from a 14-year-old. Boy. Have I heard that a million times? You sound just like Mom and Dad. I heard you say the other night that things are different now. We're different. Well, I'm going and you can't stop me. You come back here. Eric's nobody for you to be going with. Boy, with a friend like you, who needs enemies? What's wrong with him? Well, he's a crazy driver and he's, he's kind of wild, that's all. Takes one to know one, doesn't it? When he gets here, I'll tell him you can't go. I suppose the next thing you'll say is you'll worry about me. But you're not my father. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Hey, you haven't eaten anything. I'm not hungry. Eric, don't drive like a maniac and get her home by midnight. Sure will, Dad. <laughs> you were going to show me those falls all covered with ice. It's a pretty lonely road up there. Yeah, but you said it was on the way home. And Eric, I've, I've got to be getting back. Stan will have a fit. Okay. Stan was right. 
You are just a kid. One o'clock? That fish brain, Eric. I told him to have her home by midnight. Oh, why'd I let her go? She'd have hated me for it, but I could have been tough. Oh, if I had her here right now, or that... that... Son, we're leaving you in charge here. Do what you think I would do if anything should come up. And, son, Cheryl is just beginning to find out that she's a woman. Be gentle with her. Oh, I've got to do something. I'll go nuts. Try to find her. Try it again. It's no use. We'll never get out of here by ourselves. So what do we do? Freeze to death? I don't think there'll be any cars on this road till in the morning. You wait here, and I'll go down and get some help. You kidding? Stay here alone? Well, I've already been up that road tonight. Well, there's this other one. It's a long way up to the lodge, right past the falls. Yeah, that sounds like something you might try. OK, thank you very much. I can hear Stan when we get home. I told you. I told you Eric drove like a maniac. I'm sorry, Cheryl, really. That's all right, Eric. I'm not blaming you. It's not all right. Nothing I do is right. After this, your parents won't let me near your place. Oh, I don't know. Parents are awfully funny. You never know what they'll do. And they always misunderstand kids. I think it's best just not to talk to them very much. Boy, I'm glad Mom and Dad aren't home. You'd never believe how they worry. My parents couldn't care less. Be nice just to think that once in a while somebody would worry about me. At least you're, you guys are a family. Yeah, I guess it would be kind of rough if nobody cared at all. But just this once, I'm glad nobody's there to worry about me. Just Stan. He's been asleep for hours. Here comes a car. Am I glad to see you? All right, Eric, what's going on here? And you better make it good. Oh, Stan. Easy, boy. It's OK, Stan. I'm all right. Before you blow your top, why don't you find out what's happened? 
All right, I'm listening, I'm listening, but you better make it good. All right, the car slid off the road, it was stuck in the snow, and I couldn't get it out. Well, what were you doing on this road in the first place? We wanted to see the falls. Did it ever occur to you that I might be crazy worrying? I nearly called the police. Oh, Stan, I'm sorry. Do you think I plan on this? Well, I'm sorry, too. Cheryl's all right. Nothing happened to her. Just try telling that to the neighbors that know she was out all night. What'll they think? Get me. Last night, Cheryl told me I was beginning to sound just like Dad. Now I'm sounding just like Mother. I may just give you a good walloping yet. Come on, Eric, let's get the car out of the snowbank and go home. Grandma. Great. I'm just fine. Uh, everything's been just great. Well, uh, Cheryl's had a little cold. Tonight? Well, sure, I'll be at the airport. No, no trouble. Uh, oh, Mom, tell Dad that... Well, just tell him... Well, we've missed you. All right, sure will. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Mom told me to tell you that um, they love us. As if we already didn't know. After the following message, we will listen to our regular early morning feature, Dr. Elliot Landers, who will discuss how can parents get through to their teenagers? <laughs> it ain't easy, man. It ain't easy. <laughs> 